Hello. In this presentation, we will take a quick look at some of the graphical user interface tools present in Eman 2. Eman 2 provides a variety of different widgets for visualizing various types of data. You can visualize single uh, two-dimensional images or tiled two-dimensional images. We'll see what that means in a moment or two. We can visualize uh, three-dimensional density maps in various ways, isosurface visualization, volume rendering, or cutting slices through the density map. We can look at two-dimensional plots of XY data, three-dimensional plots, XYZ data, uh, and then there's a plot for showing you distributions of orientations uh, on a unit sphere. There are a couple of other specialized graphical tools as well, but these are the ones that we'll focus on mostly during this demonstration. Eman also supports a wide range of different file formats. One of the most useful things in Eman 2 is its file browser, which will allow you to seamlessly look at all of the various types of file formats commonly used in cryoEM data processing and or convert the data between various types. So the directory that I'm in right now has a variety of different files in spider format, MRC format, and magic format, etc. I'm going to run the, the basic visualization program e2display.py. You can see the window popped up behind the current window, and this is the basic browser interface. You can see, we'll see, uh, just like a typical file browser, you'll see a list of the files in the local directory. Uh, I can click on one of these files, for example, it's a magic image stack, and then I'll see a list of the image, the numbered individual images that are present in this file. So this one file contains uh, 271 images in it. Now, if I double-click on the image, it will pop up a tiled image display showing me all of the particles in that stack. I can... There we go. Uh, I can zoom in and out on the image using the mouse wheel. Okay, so I can make the images larger or smaller that way. Alternatively, if I want to bring up the control panel, I can get a lot of uh, detailed control over how this interface works. Now, there's a standard in Eman 2. The left mouse button will do various things in various programs, but the middle mouse button always brings up a control panel. If you're using a Macintosh, you have to hold down the Alt button and click with the left mouse button to do the same thing, since you may not have a middle mouse button available to you. So we can see this uh, interface. We see a histogram. We see a variety of controls for brightness, contrast, minimum, maximum value, gamma, etc. Uh, and then we see a variety of different options for controlling how the mouse interacts with the image. So you can see I can adjust the brightness or the contrast of this image display and I can make it look just like I want it to look. Another nice thing about this tiled image display is we can take any of the header parameters that are present in an image stack and we can display them uh, on, as in the corner of the image near the image number. So if I click on this values menu, I could turn on something like uh, mean value or maximum value. Let's try maximum value. Now we can see all of the maximum values, uh, density values in, present in any of these images. So you can use this to look at the header parameters for all of the images in the list. If I use the right mouse button, I can drag and see uh, the later images in the list, so I can pan around the display. All right, so let's close this now. Now I showed you how you could visualize the entire image file. What else could we do? I can see the list of individual images here. If I click, just single click on one of these images, I can actually see here a list of all of the detailed header parameters of that specific image. And you'll notice that among these parameters are parameters labeled imagic dot something. So the file reader is file format aware, and it will read all of the metadata that it can from the, from the header of each file format. So this is a great way of looking at, uh, looking at this hidden binary header that's present in a lot of these image files. Okay, let's take a look, for example, now at an MRC volume image. So this image is not a stack, it just has a single image in it, so when I click on it, I see the header information here immediately. I can see now all of the MRC header information present there. And I can look through here and see all of the various parameters. If I double-click on it, then, of course, it'll open up the three-dimensional display. It defaults to be an isosurface display. And, like before, if I use the middle uh, mouse, if I use the mouse wheel, I can zoom in or out, and if I middle click or on the Mac alt click, I'll bring up a control panel. And the control panel will allow me to control various things, for example, the isosurface threshold. I can change that interactively. Uh, I can zoom in and out. I can change the orientation. I can also add other types of visualizations. So let's say I want to put a slice in here as well. 
Now I can see there's a slice displayed right there, and I can change the location of the slice through the map. If I want to get rid of the ISO surface, I can just click on the ISO surface and I can delete it. And now I just see a slice. Maybe I'll turn on a cube so you can see the limits of the, of the box. Uh, and I can move the slice up and down. I can change the slice so it's in Z orientation, any of the major axes, or I can have it track the orientation that I'm currently rotated in. Y slice in. Now let's try turning volume rendering on. So there's a volume rendering. Now you can see we're, we're looking through. And we can change the contrast and brightness of the, of the volume rendering if we'd like. The so-called saturation of the, uh, of the volume rendering. Uh, so you see, you get a good idea of, of the various capabilities. Of course, I can put multiple slices in. I could put, say, another slice, another slice in or perpendicular to the first slice, and I can do various sorts of visualizations. Let's see. Uh, also note, if you're interested in displaying a particle in a particular orientation and then generating that orientation in some other program for comparison purposes, uh, let me turn off the volume rendering here. Turn back on the ISO surface. So let's say I want to put an ISO surface in this orientation. I want to see what orientation that is. I can go to the advanced panel, and now I can see the three Euler angle parameters in Eman convention uh, associated with the orientation. You can see as I rotate this around, it changes the Euler angle parameters interactively. And I can also change the convention that it will display these in. For example, if I want to see in spider convention, I can do that, and it will show me phi theta and psi. So this gives a great way of uh, converting uh, from one Euler angle standard to another standard interactively. Okay, I think that's probably enough of the 3D visualizer. Let's see what else we've got. Here's a single image in spider format. You can see the various spider header format uh, header data items here. Uh, and if I double click on that, then I'll open a single image browser. This is very similar to the multiple image browser, but it has a little bit more functionality in the control panel. Let me zoom out a little bit. You can see this is probably a portion of an entire micrograph. Now, if I bring up the control panel, you'll see that it has slightly different capabilities. Uh, one of the things it'll allow you to do is look at the Fourier transforms of the image. If I click on the AMP button, and then I hit Auto Contrast, I can look at the Fourier transform of the power spectrum, so look at the power spectrum, basically, of this overall image. If I click FFT, uh, it will show me basically the same thing, but now color represents phase and intensity represents intensity like it did before. Or we can look at just a plain phase image where phase is represented as a, as a grayscale value. All right, now there are a few other tabs up here. There's a save tab. This allows us to take a screenshot or to save the image itself to any of uh, the supported file formats in, in, in Eman 2. Uh, there's a measure panel. This allows us to make measurements. Let me go back to real space. Once I set the angst per pixel value, you can see I can measure distances uh, and various other things. This also probes the image. So if I'm zoomed way in here, I can actually measure the value present in individual pixels in the image. Okay. The draw interface gives us a primitive way of actually modifying the contents of the image. You can see pen size, pen to size, and pen value. Uh, and once I'm in this mode, if I use my left mouse button, I can actually modify what's, what's in the image itself. Now this doesn't modify the file on disk, it only modifies the copy of the image in memory. If you want to save it to disk, you have to go back to the Save tab and save the image. Uh, and then finally, there's a Python tab, which is for advanced users. You can actually type arbitrary Python commands in here and do things to the image to, uh, to modify it, correct it. So for example, if I wanted to uh, uh, invert the image, I could say image.mult minus 1. And now the image has been, I'll have to change the content, there we go, auto contrasting. Now you can see the image has been inverted. Okay, I think that's all we really need to look at in the single image interface. Let me go ahead and exit the browser, and I'm going to go to a different directory now. Uh, this is going to be a directory where I have refined some ribosome data from Chris Akey. 
and I can see a variety of different subdirectories in here. Now let me go ahead and launch the graphical user interface again here too. To display, and now we can see a variety of subdirectories here and any files that we have at the top level. Let me go into say the refine one of these refinement directories, and you'll notice when I go into this refine directory, I see this BDB thing. Uh, this BDB refers to Berkeley Database. Uh, most of Eman2 uses an internal database format while you're doing the data processing. One of the things that you can do using this graphical user interface is if you want to take one of these internal database format files and export it into another file format that you could use in another file. So let's say we wanted to open, so here for example we have a, one of the 3D reconstructions. We can open it up, we can look at it, etc. Let's say we want to save this reconstruction into an HDF file or an MRC file so we can open it up in Chimera. All we would do is right click here and then we can say save as and we can save it in whatever file format we'd like. We'll call this, for example, ribosome.hdf. And now if I go back in the browser, I will see ribosome.hdf right there. And I can see all the header parameters, etc. And I can open it up and I'll see that it oops, and I'll see that it's the same as it was before. Okay, you'll notice now if you right-click on various items here that you'll get different context-dependent capabilities. Uh, so, for example, this is a 3D volume, but I can also view this in a single 2D view. What will that do? Well, if I open that up, what it'll do is it'll show me a set of Z slices. If I use the up arrow button, I can scroll through these slices, and I can look at the volume. I'll auto-contrast this so it looks a little bit better in the middle. And now you can see I can sort of scroll up and down through the Z slices. Now, this is very similar to what we could do with slicing in the 3D interface, but in this case, we have straight 2D pictures. Now you'll notice these text files here, which have this little wavy line symbol next to them. In each line they have an X value, some sort of white space, and then a Y value. Uh, and these represent a two-dimensional plot. This is the structure factor that was determined for this particle. So if I double click on this, it will by default open this plot view. Now of course the structure factor falls off very quickly, so unless I put it on a log scale I won't be able to see very much. So I'll open up the control panel, and I'll hit the Y log button and now I can see my plot of the structure factor. I can use the left mouse button to mark values in the plot. I can use the right mouse button to drag and zoom in in various regions of the plot. If I want to zoom back out, I just click with the right mouse button and then zoom back out again. So that's most of the functionality that's present in the browser interface. But you'll note there are a couple of other things here. It says single preview or multiple preview, so normally if I am looking at something like, uh, say, one of these reconstructions. Oops. And I click on another one. It will open it up in the same window. If I say multi-preview here, when I open up another one, it will open it up in a new window. And then I can compare them side by side. Uh, the last thing I'll show you here is the asymmetric unit viewer. So I can type E2 EulerExplorer.py, and this will open up an interface which allows us to look at the particle orientation distributions for any one of these refinement runs that we've done. So you can see for these ribosome particles, there is a bit of a preferred orientation. We see a clump of orientations here, and a clump of particles and orientations here. If I click on the particle, I can actually look at the projection in that particular orientation. And you can see it says one of three here, so I can also, so this is a projection, if I go up, that will show me the class average corresponding to that projection. And if I go up again, it will show me the raw, sort of unprocessed class average. This class average is masked and filtered a little bit to best match the projection. So you can see any differences that might exist between the projection and the class average in this step of the refinement. Uh, click on another orientation. You can see here, uh, we can see very nicely that cleft is reproduced. But you can see this doesn't look like a perfect match here. So what might be going on? Well. If I open up the control panel for this view, you'll see that what I'm looking at here is actually the first round of refinement in this refine 11 directory. If I pick one of these other parameters here, I can see the refinement later in the processing, and I can see how the orientation of particles varies as I go through this ref iterative refinement process. Okay, well, I hope that gave you a little bit of a feel of the graphical user interface in Eman. Uh, we'll go through more details of how various things work in, in the more specialized demos later on. Thanks for your attention.